suspense. Radio's outstanding theater of thrills brings you an hour, a full 60 minutes of suspense. Tonight, a banner presentation of Emlyn Williams' classic, Night Must Fall, directed by Anton M. Leader and produced by Robert Montgomery. Our stars, Mr. Montgomery and Dame May Whitty, with Heather Angel, Richard Ney, and Matthew Bolton in Night Must Fall. This is Robert Montgomery. I cannot introduce Night Must Fall. I, uh, I have no words in prologue. So surely do I feel that the play is the thing. But I can introduce with great anticipation and pride the performance of Dame May Whitty as Mrs. Bramson, Heather Angel as Olivia Grain, Richard Ney as Hubert Lowry, and Matthew Bolton as Inspector Belsize. It is our particular pride that both Dame May Whitty and Matthew Bolton are playing the roles they created in the original stage play in London. And I, I will play Danny. With these performances, and with Night Must Fall, we again hope to keep you in... Suspense! It is a smallish place, a typical English country cottage, rambling and comfortable, with roses climbing upon the walls and the fences. Surrounding it on every side stands the dark bulk of the forest, the massive trees close-packed, their interlacing canopies shadowing the undergrowth below. It is an out-of-the-way place, far from the nearest village, a mile or more from the nearest neighbor, a proper place for a murder, you might say. Usually, the forest quiet is undisturbed, but today, one might hear a few scattered shouts, see strange men in uncomfortable city clothes poking about through the brush, searching. And in the Bramson cottage, Dora the maid is receiving a visitor in the kitchen. Oh, Danny, I'm so glad you come. I've been half off me rock, or what with that old witch in there saying all those terrible things about you and me, and the police turning the place upside down and asking all kinds of questions, and... Oh, Danny! Here, 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 steady now. What's all the row? What police? You mean you haven't heard? That Mrs. Chalfant, the woman from the tall boss, has disappeared. Nobody knows what's become of her. All that... And there's even a man from Scotland Yard. Scotland Yard? That is gratifying. Gratifying? Well, I mean, they're being Johnny on the spot like that. Shows we're getting our tax money's worth. Now, what's the matter with the old girl? Oh, Dennis, she knows about us. And she says if you don't marry me, she'll... She'll give me the sack. <whistles> oh, Danny, you will. You will, won't you? If you no, don't... No, if about it. Always had the very same thing in mind myself. Oh, Danny. I expect she wants to talk to me. Where is it? Through there. Oh, you can't go in now. She's got people with her. The Scotland Yard well, I man. I can look, can't I? Well, Danny, be careful. If she hears you. Cat can look at a king, you know. So that's Mrs. Bramson, eh? They say she don't have half a bit talk tucked away. Oh, she's rich and all, but try to get hold of him. Who's the girl? With the spectacles. Oh, that's her niece, Miss Grime. Miss Olivia Grime. Poor and son. And the chap with her, I, I suppose he... Mr. Laurie. He wants to marry her, but... I... I don't think she wants to, not really. Well, now, if you see anything unusual, or anybody strange wandering in the woods, our men are stationed nearby, and just let them know. Good morning, Mrs. Bramson. Who's that? Just left. The detective. Scotland Yard. Wish I had a better look at him. Never seen anyone from Scotland Yard before. Dora? Is that your young man, I guess, talking about that? Uh-oh. No, Mum. That is... Yes, Mum. Only... Well, send him in here, instantly. Yes, Mum. Go on. Nothing ventured, nothing gained, as they say. 
Well? <clears throat> Morning, all. So you're Babyface, as daughter calls you. That's me. Silly name, isn't it? What's your real name? Dan. Just call me Dan. You smoke, I see. Yes. Oh, I am sorry. I always forget my manners with a cigarette when I'm in company. I am sorry. You know my maid, Dora Paco, I believe. Well, we haven't met, yes. You walked out with her last August bank holiday. Yes. <laughs> Excuse me smiling, but it, it sounds funny when you put it like that, doesn't it? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Oh, I am. I've thought about it a good bit since, I can tell you. You work at the Tall Boys, don't you? Yes, miss. 24 hours a day, miss. Oh, well, then perhaps you can tell us something about that female who's been murdered. Hmm? Well, can you tell us? You know, there's a Mrs. Chalfont staying at the Tall Boys who went off one day. Yes. Well, nobody's seen her since. I know. What's she like? But I thought you said, or somebody said, something about a murder. Well, we don't know, of course, but there might have been, mightn't there? Oh, yes, there might have been, yes. Have you ever seen her? Oh, yes, I, I used to take cigarettes and drinks up to her. Well, what's she like? What's she like? She's on the tall side. Thin ankles with one of them bracelets on one of them. Fair hair and... Well, go on. Thin eyebrows with white marks where they was pulled out to be in the fashion, you know. Her mouth, a bit thin as well, with red stuff painted round it. You can rub it off, I suppose. Her neck, rather thick. Laughs a bit loud, and then it stops. She's... Very lively. You can't say I don't keep my eyes skin, can you? Jove, I should say you do. A living portrait, if ever there was one. Now, uh... Weren't you going for a walk? <laughs> so I was, by Jove. Well, I'll just charge off. Goodbye. Goodbye, Hubert. You're a very observant, young man. Oh, the ladies, you know. If you weren't so observant, that Dora mightn't be in the flummox she is now. <laughs> That's true, ma'am. You don't sound very repentant. Well, what's done's done's my motto, isn't it? Or oh, you leaving, miss? If you don't mind. She'd be a nice bit of ice for next summer, wouldn't she? You're a proper one to talk about next summer, when Dora will be... Well, what is it now? Oh, Mrs. Branson, the butcher wants paying, and he says there's men ferreting at the bottom of the garden looking for that Mrs. Chalfont, and do you know about it? Well, they won't ferret long, not amongst my pampas grass. Olivia? Olivia! Oh, that girl's never there. Here, you. Come out of my garden, you. Come out. You there. You, you come out of my garden. <laughs> You're the cook, I suppose. Why, I'll never know. Won't let me pay the butcher so I won't know where she keeps her purse. But I do know. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. They do say down at the tall boys that she's got enough inside of her purse, too. Well, nobody's seen it open. If you have a peep inside, young fella, you'll go down in history. That's what you'll do. I... Oh, something's boiling over. Auntie, did you... Oh. Hello, miss. Did Mrs. Bramson call me, do you know? I'm sorry. I don't know your name. Oh. There is uh, not much doing around here for a girl, is there? I'm not a snob. But in case you ever call here again, I'd like to point out that though I'm employed by my aunt, I'm not quite in Dora's position. Oh, I hope not. Though I'll be putting it all right for Dora. I'm going to marry her and I... I don't believe you. You don't like me, do you? No. Everybody else does? Your eyes are set quite wide apart. Your hands are quite good. I, I don't really know what's wrong with you. You know, I've been looking at you, too. You're lonely, aren't you? You know, I can I'm see... sorry. It's a waste of time you're doing your stuff with me. I'm not the type. Are you playing up to Mrs. Bramson? Playing up? You stand a pretty poor chance there, you know. What do you bet? They say they've got permits to look for that silly woman. Who are they, I'd like to know? If there's anything I hate, it's these men who think they've got authority. I don't think they're quite as bad as men who think they've got charm. What do you mean by that? Well, it's no good thinking she's got any, is it? Now, young man, what about Dora? Uh, wait I... a minute, wait a minute. Are you sure you're comfortable like that? Yes, don't you think, what? Mrs. Bramson, no. you ought to be facing a, a no, wee no. bit more of this side? Yes. There, towards the sun more now. You're looking pale, you know. Pale? Did you say pale? Washed out. The minute I saw you just now, I said to myself, now there is a lady that's got a lot to contend oh, well, with. Well, I have. 
Nobody knows it better than I do. Oh, no, I'm sure. Oh, it must be terrible to watch everybody else striding up and down, enjoying everything, and to see everybody tasting the fruit, and... Oh, I am sorry. I shouldn't have ought to say that. But it's true. As true as you're my witness. Do you mind if I ask you what your ailments are? Well, hadn't you better sit down? Thank you, ma'am. Well, I have the most terrible palpitations. Palpitations? Uh... But the way you get about. Oh? Well, it's a pretty bad thing to have, you know. Do you know that nine women out of ten in your position to be just sitting down and giving way? Would they? Yes, they would. I've known people with palpitations. Somebody very close to me. They're dead now. Oh, my mother, as a matter of fact. I can just remember her. Oh. As a matter of fact. Yes? Oh, no, it's a daft thing. Come along now, out with well, it. Well, it's only fancy, I suppose, but you remind me a bit of her. Of your mother? Oh. Have you got a son? I haven't anybody at all. She had the same eyes, very wide apart as you, and, 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 and the same very good hands. Oh. And the same palpitations. And the same palpitations. You don't mind my talking about your health, do you? No. You know you ought to get used to letting other people do things for you. Yes. Yes. You're a funny boy to be a page boy. <laughs> I've taken a liking to you. That's very kind of you, Mrs. Bramson. Auntie, shall I pack these books for the post now? I'll post them for you. Oh. With pleasure. Have you got to go back? Now? Well, no, not really. This is my half day. Stay to lunch. Well, I, I don't like to impose myself. In the kitchen, of course. Oh, I know. Well, there's plenty of food. Stay to lunch. Well, I don't know. All right, so, so long as you let me help a bit this morning. Don't you want some string for this? Where's it kept? Oh, that woman knows. In the kitchen somewhere. Through here? Yes, that's right. Dan, what'd she say? Say? About us. Oh, it's all right. I told her I'm going to marry you. Oh, Dad! Here, here, here. Now, I am on, I'm on an errand for the old girl. I, I want a bit of string. Oh, yes. Right here in the jaw. An errand for Mrs. Bramson. That's right. Aha! Uh -huh. This'll do. Oh, Dan, she likes you. And why not? Here's something in the paper. A, a keeper in the Shepley Woods was closely questioned, but he had heard nothing beyond a woman's voice in the woods and a man's voice probably with her. Rubbish, the whole business. Uh, you, uh, Dan, or whatever your name is, are those men still rummaging in my garden? They're out there poking about right enough. And I must go this minute and have a look at my pampas grass. And if they've damaged it, I'll bring an action. <laughs> have your package ready in half a shake now, miss. Thank you. What's that you're whistling? I don't know, some song I picked up. Mighty like a rose, I think they call it. Do you know what it says here in the paper? About what? The, the murder. Oh? You're sure of that now, are you? It says, a keeper heard a woman's voice in the woods on the afternoon in question, and a man's voice, probably with her, singing Mighty like a rose. Is that a fact now? Popular song, that one. Pretty, too. Pretty little fella. Everybody knows. Don't know what to call me, but I'm mighty like a rose. Dun, dun, dun. Sorry, is my cigarette worrying you? Not at all. I like it. I can never make this hurried game come out. Look, the red nine on the black ten. Don't interfere. I saw that. Now I wonder... No, 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 no. The other one, the other one, the oh, other one. Oh, yes, dear, of course. <coughs> oh, I am sorry. Is my cigarette bothering you? No, dear, no. Oh, I'm sick of solitaire. I want to be read to. Right to now. Let's see what we have. Ah. You old-fashioned child. What? It's East Lynn. It's your favourite book, isn't it? Oh, why, yes, dear, so it is. Go on. You old-fashioned child retorted Mrs. Vane. 
Why did you not put on your diamonds? I did put on my diamonds, stammered Lady Isabel. But I took them off again. What on earth for? That's the other lady speaking there. Yes, dear. What on earth for? I did not like to be too fine, answered Lady Isabel with a laugh. Good, isn't it? Oh, yes, realistic. Ah, time for your medicine. Oh, Danny, you always remember. Hello, 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 everyone. Any news? Hello, Hubert. News? About what? Why, about the... That is, the missing woman. What else? All I know is those idiot policemen are still pocketing about in my garden and my pampas grass is practically ruined. They haven't found anything, of course. They never will. Lots of nonsense. Well, where there's life, there's hope. What? Huh, Mrs. Bramson, time for your walk. Oh, yes, dear. Have you got my pills? Got them in my pocket. And my chocolates. Got them in my pocket, too. Here's your hat now, and I carry your rug on my shoulder. See you later. Be good. Right you are. Mind you take good care of her. Hubert. Yes? What do you think of him? Granny's white-haired boy, you mean? <laughs> He's all right, I suppose. He's made quite a hit with her. Yes, hasn't he? And in such a short time. Something I haven't been able to manage in a year. Yes. It was just two weeks ago today he moved in, bag and baggage. He came the afternoon after... that woman disappeared. By Jove, that's right. Hubert. Hmm? Have you noticed... how he acts as if he doesn't care tuppence, but all the time he's watching to see what we're thinking of him? Oh, yes, I've thought of that. It's his incredible vanity. They always have it. Who? Murderers. Good heavens, Olivia. Do you mean this woman they're looking for? Yes. But why? Oh, it's incredible. I say... Hubert, uh, I'm going to look through his things. Right now, will you? Oh, while they're out. I say, now, that's, that's a bit thick, spying. We may never have another chance. Please, will you help me? But, well, I suppose... Come on. <laughs> Wasn't there another one? Oh, yes. This hat box. Old-fashioned, isn't it? A bit heavy, too. Suppose there's something inside it. It's locked. Damn. But I've got the key somewhere about, if you... Oh, no, no, no. We were just... Could I have my wallet back, please? It's the only one I got. Oh, yes, of course. Thank you very much. Not at all. I... Did you see the picture of me when I was a little fella? Yes, it's very jolly. Did you? It was on the inside of my wallet. Oh, was it? Yes, where I should be keeping my money. Only any bit of money I have, I always keep on me. Safer, don't you think? Yes. I only keep one ten bob note in there at this wallet for, for emergencies. Oh, that's funny. It's gone. Well, I expect I dropped it somewhere. What did you think of the letter? Letter? You got it in your hand. Oh, well, I didn't. It means well, does Lil, but we had a row. She would spy on me. And if there's anything I hate, it's a spy. Don't you agree? Yes. I'd sooner have anything than a spy. Bar a murderer, of course. What? What did you say? I said bar a murderer, of course. Talking of murder, do you know anything about Mrs. Chalfont's whereabouts at the moment? I've got nothing to go on, but I think she's been murdered. Oh, you do? Yes, I do. Who by? They say she had several chaps on a string, uh, and there was one fella, a London chap, a bachelor, very citified, with a fair moustache. It... Well, what are you looking at me for? Well, now, you wasn't around these parts the day she bunked, was you? Yes, I was, as a matter of fact. Uh-huh. What in heaven's name are you getting at? Well, if the shoe fits, eh? Uh, I'm going out for a breath of air, Olivia. <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah. I really am, ab about going through your things. Sorry you were caught at it, you mean. Did you do it? You know, you wouldn't be bad looking without them glasses. It doesn't interest me very much what I look Don't like. Don't you believe it? You're very conceited, aren't you? Yes. And you're acting all the time, aren't you? Acting? Acting what? Look at the way I can look you in the eyes. I'll stare you out. I have a theory. It's the criminals who can look you in the eyes... And the honest people who blush and look away. Oh? It's a very blank look, though, isn't it? Is it? You are acting, aren't you? Yes. 
And what do you like when you're not at it? I don't know. It's so long since I stopped. But when you're alone... Then I act more than ever I do. Why? I don't know, because I like it. Okay? Now, what do you say if I ask a question or two for a change? Just for a change. Why can't you take a bit of an interest in some other body but me? I'm not interested in you. But you... You don't talk. That's bound to make people wonder. Well, I can talk a lot sometimes. A drop of drink makes a power of difference to me. <laughs> You'd be surprised. I wonder if I would. I know you would. I think I can diagnose you all right. Carry on. You haven't any feelings at all, but you live in a world of your own, a world of your own imagination. I don't understand you so very well, not being so very literary. You follow me perfectly well. Do you still think there's been a bit of dirty work? I don't know what to think now. I, I suppose not. Disappointed? What on earth do you mean? Disappointed? Yes, I suppose I am. Why? Oh, I don't know. Because nothing has ever happened to me, and it's a dull day, and it's the depth of the country. I, I don't know. <coughs> Dora, what is it? They're digging in the rubbish bin. Well? There's something sticking out. What is it? A hand. Somebody's hand. Oh, Miss Crane, somebody's hand. They found her. Yes. Where are you going? To have a look. In tonight's full hour of suspense, Mr. Robert Montgomery stars as Danny with Dame May Whitty, Richard Nay, Heather Angel, and Matthew Bolton in Night Must Fall. Tonight's study in Suspense. In just a moment, we will return with Act Two of Suspense. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. And now, back to our Hollywood soundstage and act two of Night Must Fall, starring Robert Montgomery, Dame May Whitty, Heather Angel, Richard Ney, and featuring Matthew Bolton in a narrative well calculated to keep you in suspense. The forest around Mrs. Bramson's cottage had always been quiet and peaceful until the day they found the body. From that day on, there was no more quiet. There were policemen and questions. There were busloads of sightseers and newspaper men and photographers. Suddenly, the little rose-covered cottage was a focus of national curiosity. And the people who lived there basked in the reflected glory. <laughs> Danny, you are the one. <laughs> Back home again. I put oh, your gloves away. I feel dead. And no wonder talking to all those people, getting your picture took 15, 16 times again. <laughs> I... I hope there aren't any more buses today. <laughs> oh, it's you, Olivia. Hello, Auntie. And Mr... Um, and Mrs. Bramson? Uh, I feel dead. Now, don't be a silly old woman. You look as pretty as a picture. Strawberries and cream in your face and not a day over 40. And when I've made you a nice cup of tea, you'll be 25 in the sun and 18 with your back to the light so you can think yourself lucky. <laughs> you, you caution. <laughs> you'll be the death of me. <laughs> <laughs> and now would you like a drop of in your tea? Gin, whiskey, liquor, brandy, or a nice dollop of sailor's oh, rum? Hey? Just listen to him. <laughs> now, don't you make me laugh, dear. Because, you know... There's always my heart. You've lost your heart. You know you have. To the little fellow who pushes your pram. You know you have. Pram! <laughs> <laughs> pram! Uh-huh. Oh, it, but, oh, it, it 
to get to laugh, dear, with, with this thing all around us. Ah, yes. I forgot. Wonder if they'll ever nab him. What do you mean? The fellow who did it. Wonder what he's doing now. I wonder. You know, the fact they still have no idea where this woman's head is... Cut clean off? At one stroke, they say. Stop it! Well, no need to jump down the poor boy's throat. Merely the fact. Cut off at one stroke. <sighs> Horrible. I suppose you won't stay to tea, Mr... Uh, uh... No, no, thank you. I think I'll go off before it's dark. Goodbye, Mrs. Bramson. Goodbye, Mr... Dan, Dan, just Dan. Goodbye, Olivia. Goodbye, Hubert. I'm sorry. Can't be helped. Good night. Good night. I'll see you to the door. Well, what's he so solemn about? Olivia's decided not to marry him. Silly girl. Made up her mind a bit doesn't sudden, didn't she? Oh, I don't know what's got into the girl. This last week or so, she's been touchy as a cat with kittens. Maybe she's lost her heart to someone too, eh? <laughs> Tell me. Tell me. Have any more of those terrible people called reporters, police? There's a definite falling off in attendance today. It's Sunday, I expect. <laughs> don't talk like that, dear. Sorry, Mum. And don't you call me Mum. Well, if I can't call you Mrs. Bramson, then I can't call you Mum. What can I call you? Well, if you're very good, I might let you call me Mother. <laughs> okay, Mother. <laughs> you are in a mood today. <laughs> I want to be read to now. Your servant, mother of mine? What'll you have now? Let's see. There's the Channings and Red Court Farm. Oh, I'm tired of them. Well, uh, oh, what about the Bible? The Bible? Sunday, you know. Oh, well, all right, dear. Makes a nice change. Not that I don't often dip into it. I'm sure you do. Now, where'll I read? Oh, well, at random is nice, don't you think, dear? At random. Yes, I... Auntie, the paper boy's at the back door. He says your picture's in the news of the world again. Oh? He says he won't leave the paper until he's been paid. Says he hasn't been paid for a month. Hasn't been paid? Is he mad? Are you mad? Why don't you pay him? Because you don't give me the money to do it with. Well, I... Oh, well, wheel me over to that cupboard. Right you are. Auntie. Well, what? Well, don't, don't you think... I mean, wouldn't it... Danny? Why, he knows where I keep my money, don't you, dear? Since you told me, of course. Of course. Well, now, here, here's the key. Aye. Wait till I get it from around my neck. Eh? Now, help me with it. Right you are, dear. There you are. Well, Olivia, what are you staring at? Isn't that rather a lot of money to have in the house? Put not your trust in banks is my motto. And always will be. And so right, so right. But there's hundreds of pounds. It... Don't be a silly goose. Here, go and get the paper. Yes, Auntie. And hurry back. Now, lock the box up and put it back. There's a dear. Right. What were those sort of coloured folders? Looked like somebody's will or something. Oh, they're bonds and stocks. Nothing you'd understand about, dear. Oh? Where is that girl with the paper? Here you are, Auntie. Thank you, miss. I'll find the place for you. There you are, no mother of mine. Oh, look, whole page, headlines and all. Oh, yes. The victim's past. Right. With another picture of me underneath. Ah. Oh, taken at Tunbridge a year before the war, really. Oh. The bungalow of death. Fiendish murderer still at large. The enigma of the missing head. Oh, this print's too small. Shall I read it to you? Yes, dear, do. The, let's see now. Oh, yeah. The, the, the murderer committed the crime in the forest. He buried the body shallow in the open pit, cunningly chancing it being filled, which it was the next day, the 11th. That was the day before I come here. So it was. The head was severed by a skilled person, possibly a butcher. The murderer... What's the matter? Can you hear something? I forgot it was Sunday. They're going to church in the villages. All got up in their Sunday best, with the prayer books and the organ playing and the windows shining, shining on holy things because holy things isn't afraid of the daylight. And Danny, what? But all the time the daylight's moving over the floor, and by the end of the sermon, the air and the church is turning grey, and people isn't able to think of holy things so much no more, only of the terrible things that's going on outside that everybody's reading about in the papers, because they know that though it's still daylight and everything's ordinary and quiet. Today will be the same as all the other days and come to an end and it'll be night. 
Hmm. I forgot it was Sunday. Good gracious. What's come over you, Danny? Oh, I speechify like anything when I'm roused. I used to go to Sunday school, see, and the thoughts sort of pop into my head, like as if I was reading them off a book. <laughs> you should have been a preacher, you should. <laughs> Well, I want to lie down now. Anything you say, Mother of mine, no, anything No, 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 you say. push me about enough for one day. You might try to cheer Olivia up a bit, though. For the look of her, she needs it. Only too happy to try, Mum. That is, if you like me to, Miss Olivia. You've been drinking, haven't you? You don't miss much, do you? No. I've had a drink, and I feel fine. You wouldn't like another dose of reading, would you? I prefer talking. Carry on? Asking questions. Carry on? Are you sure you were ever a sailor? Are you sure you weren't a butcher? Ah, talking's daft. Doing's the thing. You can talk, too. Ah, yes. Did you hear me just now? She's right, you know. I should have been a preacher. I remember when I was a kid, sitting in Sunday school, catching my mother's eye where she was sitting by the door, and she pointed to the pulpit and then to me, as if to say... That's the place for you. I never forgot that. I don't believe a word of it. Neither do I, but it sounds wonderful, doesn't it? I never saw my mum, and I never had a dad, and the first thing I remember is the Cardiff Ducks, and you're the first woman I ever told that to. So you can compliment yourself. Or the drink. I think it's the drink. You do live in your imagination, don't you? Yes. It's the only way to bear with the awful things you have to do. What awful things? Well, you... I haven't had as much to drink as all that. Uh -huh. You haven't a very high opinion of women, have you? Women don't have to drink. Be drunk to talk. You don't talk that much, though. Fair play. You're a dark horse, you are. You know, this isn't the life for you. What is there to it? Tell me that. What is there to it? Yes. Getting up at seven. Having breakfast with a vixenish old woman and spending the rest of the day with her in a dreary house in the middle of a wood. Going to bed at eleven. I'm plain, I haven't got any money, I'm shy, and I haven't got any friends. Don't you like the old lady? I could kill her. Oh, no, you couldn't. Not many people have it in them to kill people. Oh, no. And what was your life at the tall boys? My life? Well, the day didn't start so good, with a lot of stuck-up boots to clean, and a lot of silly high heels all along the passage waiting for a polish... Orders, 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 go here, do this, do that. Open the door for me, get a move on. Waiter, my tea stone cold. I'm not a waiter. I'm a millionaire, and everybody's under me. And just when I think I got a bit of peace, there's somebody locking the bedroom door, won't let me out. Talk, talk, talk. Won't fork out with no more money. At me, at me, at me, calls me everything, lies on the floor and screams and screams, and nothing keeps that mouth shut, only... Leaning out of the window, and the leaves is off the trees. Oh, Lord, I wish I could hear a bit of music. And I do, inside of myself. And I have a drop of drink, and everything's fine. And when it's the night... Go on. <laughs> I'm too fly floor for you, aren't I? You'd like to know, wouldn't you? Why would you like to know? Why do you lie awake nights? Don't... I'm frightened of why? you. Why? How do you know I lie awake at night? Shall I tell you why? Because you're awake yourself. You can't sleep, can you? You can't sleep. There's one thing that keeps you awake, isn't there? One thing you've pushed into the back of your mind, and you can't do any more about it, and you never will. And you know what it is? It's a little thing. A box. Only a box, but it's rather heavy. It's the only thing that keeps me awake, mind you. The only thing. But I don't know what to do. You see, nothing worries me. Nothing in the world. Only I don't like a pair of eyes staring at me with no look in them. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Dan. Oh, Danny. <laughs> don't. There's someone at the door. Anybody's there, I'll deal with them. I'll manage them myself. You watch. Oh, hello, 
Dan, how's things? Not so bad, Mr. Inspector. Good afternoon, Miss Green. How do you do? If you'll uh, excuse me, I... Of course. Now, you're bearing up, eh, Dan? Yes, sir, bearing up, you know. We haven't scared you all out of the house yet, I see. Oh, no fear, sir. No more news from me, I suppose. No, sir. Ah, too bad, too bad. Do you mind if I sit down? Please do, sir. Would you like to see Mrs. Bramson, sir? Oh, plenty of time for that. How's she bearing up? Well, it's been a bit of a shock for her. Them finding the remains of the lady at the bottom of the garden, you know. Why didn't you sleep in your bed on the night of the 10th? What did you say? Why didn't you sleep in your bed on the night of the murder? I did. Oh, no, you didn't. Yes, I did. Oh, 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 for except about half an hour, that's right. I couldn't sleep for a toffee, and I went up on the fire escape, and I... Oh, what time was that? Oh, about... I, 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 oh, you know how it is. When you wake up in the middle of the night, you don't know what time it is. Mm-hmm. Why didn't you tell us you were on intimate terms with the deceased woman? Intimate terms? Now, come along, old chap. She was seen by two of the maids talking to you in the shrubbery. Well? Oh, sir. It's been on my conscience ever since. So you were, eh? Oh, no, sir, not that. I avoided her ever after the day she stopped me, sir. When they asked me about her, I got frightened to tell about her stopping me. But now you know about it, sir. It's a, it's a weight off my mind you wouldn't believe. As a matter of fact, sir, it was the disgust like of nearly getting mixed up with her that was keeping me awake at nights. I see. <laughs> You're a bit of a milksop, aren't you? Am I, sir? Yes. Well, that'll be all for today. I'll let you off just this once. I'm that relieved, sir. But don't... Oh, there's just one thing. If you don't mind, I'll have a quick look through your luggage. Just a matter of form. Oh, yes. Well, where do you hang out? Right in there, sir. First door facing. First door facing. You can't miss it. I'll find it. It's open, I think. You can't miss it. You can't miss it. You can't miss it. You can't miss it. This hat box is locked. Have you got the key? It isn't mine. Not yours? No. Whose is it, then? I don't know. It isn't mine. Oh, I... I'm sorry, I thought... Why, Inspector, what are you doing with my box? Your box? Yes. It's uh, got all my letters in it. But I found it... Oh, Dan's room used to be the box room. Oh, I see. I'll keep it in my wardrobe. It'll be safer there. If you'll give it to me, please. Of course. uh... Thank you. I'm very sorry, Miss. I... (laughs) I'm afraid I've offended her. She'll be all right, sir. Well, young fellow, I must be off. You might tell the old lady I popped in, will you? Tell her I hope she's better. Thank you, sir. Good day, sir. Good day. Good day, sir. Good. Welcome back to the land of the living. Oh, Danny, we thought the murder had got you. Whatever come over you? I, I don't know. I felt sick, I think. Waiting hand and foot on Madame Crocodile. Enough to wear King Kong out. Here, have a sip of this. Thank you. Is that better? Uh, yes. It clears the brain no end. Fainting indeed is a proper girl's trick. I'm ashamed of myself. Where's Miss Olivia? Gone somewhere for the night. Gone? For the night? Said she was frightened. Just a good excuse to get away from the old dragon, if you ask me. Did she say why she was frightened? Not her. Not Miss High and Mighty. I've got my own ideas about where she was going. Let Mr. Hubert... Oh, never you mind about her and Mr. Hubert. Maybe the poor thing was frightened. She tried to get the old lady to leave with her, didn't she? Well, not that she'd ever budge. Oh, we've got to get on if we're to get through the woods before it's too dark. Well, come along, then. I'd come with you, only I'm going the other direction. Paley Hill way. You going out? Huh? Yes, I, I feel a bit funny. But you can't leave her here by herself. Oh, no, she'll scream the place down. Well, I asked her a while back, and she didn't seem to mind. You know what she is, she... To do me good and won't hear of me staying. It's no good arguing with her. No good arguing with her, don't I know it? <laughs> you have a nice long walk while you get the chance. You wait on her too much. Well, you better draw the curtains. Whew, ain't it dark out? You got the torch, Dora? Okay, honey. Good night, Dan. Pity you aren't coming our way. See you in the morning. 
Good night. Okay. Good night. Good night here, good night there. Anyone who thinks the night before Judgment Day. What's the matter with it? Talking to myself. Wish people wouldn't walk out of rooms and leave me high and dry. Don't like it. Where are my chocolates? That girl's been at them again. What's that? Oh, Lord. Danny. Danny. It must have been an owl. Oh, thank heaven. Danny! What's that boy doing in the kitchen? Danny! I've got the jitters. I've got the jitters. I've got the jitters, Danny! They've all gone. They've left me here alone. Oh, Lord, help a poor old woman. Danny. Danny, where are you? Danny. Danny, I... I'm going to be murdered. Danny. 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 There's something outside. What shall I do? Danny. Danny. Danny, where are you? Where are you? Danny. 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 Oh, Lord, help me. Help me. Help me, oh, Lord. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive. Danny! Oh! Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. It's only Danny. It's only Danny. Oh, oh, Danny, Danny, I, I'll never forgive you. Oh. Never. Oh, 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 oh,
or something? Yes, a sort of thumping noise. Why, Danny, it's you. Me? It's your heart beating. Oh. <laughs> well, I... Are you all right, dear? Fine, fine. I've been running along the path, see? I've been out of training, I suppose. When I was at sea, I never missed a day running around the decks, of course. Of course. I remember those mornings on some sea, very misty place it is, with the sun like breathing silver where he's coming up across the water, and only me about and nothing else. Uh, and the sun, just me and the sun. There's no sun now, dear. It's night. I. it's night now. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. I think I'll go to bye byes and have the rest tomorrow, shall we? Help me, dear, help me. You know what I am. Yes, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I've only got two more verses. Oh, hurry up, dear. I don't want to wake up in the morning with a nasty cold. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the way of judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous... But the way of the ungodly shall perish. That's the end. Is it? Oh, well, it's been a long day. Are you quite comfortable? Bit achy. Glad to go to bed. I hope that woman's put my bottle in. Bet she hasn't. You sure you're comfortable? Wouldn't you like this cushion back of your head? No, dear. Just will me. I think you'd be more comfortable with the cushion. Oh. My pretty little fella. Everybody knows... Don't know what to call me. What a funny look on your face, dear. Smiling like that. You look so kind. So kind. What are you going to do with that cushion? Danny. Danny! some proper use. Kerosene, 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 kerosene. Ah, now, now we'll have a proper bonfire. never seen a dead body before. I climbed through the window. Nearly fell over it. Like a sack of potatoes or something. I thought it was at first. And that's murder. But it's so ordinary. I, I came back expecting... I don't know. And here I find you smoking a cigarette. You, you might have been tidying up the room for the night. It's... It's so ordinary. Why don't you say something? I thought she was going to spend the night in town. I was. Why'd you come back? To find you out. You've kept me guessing for a fortnight, guessing hard. I very nearly knew all the time, but not quite. And now I do know. Why are you so keen on finding me out? In the same way any sane, decent-minded human being would want... We'd want to have you arrested for the monster that you are. Why did you come back? I... I told you. Ha! She didn't keep any money anywhere else, did she? I've read a lot about evil. I never expected to come across it in real life. You shouldn't read so much. I never got through a book yet. But I'll read you, all right. You haven't had a drop to drink, and yet you feel as if you had. You never knew there was such a secret part inside of you. I... I 
hate you. I hate you. You feel as light as air, same as I feel sometimes. Why? This is my big chance. You're the one I can tell about myself. I'm sick of hearing how clever everybody else is. I want to tell them how clever I am for a change. Money I'm going to have and people doing what they're told and me telling them what to do it. There was a woman at the tall boys, wasn't there? She wouldn't be told, would she? She never knew it was me she was dealing with. Me? Because I made her think she was a chronically invalid, this old girl who's been treating me like a son. She's been more used to me tonight than she's been to any other buddy in her whole life. Stupid. That's what people are. Stupid. You said just now, murder's ordinary. Well, it isn't ordinary at all, see. And I'm not an ordinary chap. There's one big difference between me and the other fellows that try this game. I'll never be found out, because I don't care that. The world's got to be here from me. That's me. You wait. But you can't wait, can you? What do you mean? Well, when I say I'll never be found out, what I mean is no living soul will ever be able to tell any other living soul about me. Can you think of anybody who can go tomorrow and tell the police the fire at Forest Corner wasn't an accident at all? I... I can. No, you can't. Why can't I? Well, I'm up against a very serious problem, I am. But the answer to it is simple as pie to a fellow like me. Simple as pie. She isn't going to be the only one found tomorrow in the fire at Forest Corner. Aren't you frightened? You ought to be. Don't you think I'll do it? I know you will. I just can't realize it. You know, when I told you all about myself just now, I made up my mind then about you. That's what I am, see. I make up my mind to do a thing, and I do it. I... What's that light in there? What light? There's somebody in this room holding a flashlight. It can't be in this room. It must be a light in the wood. Well, it can't be. Look, there, the window. Somebody's watching the bungalow. Nobody's watching. I'm the one that watches. They got no call to watch me. I'll go out and tell them that and all. I'm the one who watches. Look, behind them trees. Hundreds of eyes back of each tree. Thousands of eyes. The whole world's on the track. What's that? What's that noise? Like a big wall falling over into the sea. They mustn't come in. You're looking at me as if you'd never seen me before. I never have. Nobody has. You've stopped acting at last. You're real. Frightened. Like a child. I mustn't come in. Everything's slipping away. From underneath our feet. Can't you feel it? Starting slow and then hundreds of miles an hour. I'm going backwards. And there's a wind in my ears, a terrible blowing wind. Everything's going past me like telegraph poles. All the things I've ever seen, faster and faster. Backwards to the day I was born. I can see it coming the day I was born. I'm going to die. It's all right. You won't die. I'll tell them. I'll tell them I made you do it. I'll, I'll tell lies. I'll tell... Good evening. I'm sorry to pop back like this. Well, everything looks all right here. I tell you, we did hear her. Plain as plain. And we've gone near a quarter of a mile. Plain as plain? You made my blood run cold. Danny, she screamed. Danny, where are you? Well, we'll soon find out. Now then... Oh, hello, Dan. Hello, sir. Second time today, eh? That's right, sir. How's the old lady? Oh, not so bad, thanks, Inspector. She's gone to bed. She says she didn't want to be disturbed. Smell of kerosene. Well, you know what she's like, Inspector. Very nervy these days. I'll just take a look in the bedroom, if you don't mind. I don't sooner got around the corner than she screamed for me. Danny, 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 she screamed. Danny, she calls me. That's a pet name for Dan, that is. I... She's not there. I... I'll take a look in the sunroom. Yeah. I told her so then. I said, it's dangerous. That's what it is. Having so much kerosene in the house. That kerosene. She shouldn't have had so much kerosene in the house. Well, now... Miss Crane, what are you doing here, may I ask? Inspector, I'm concerned... It's all right. In... I'm the fella. Anything I'm concerned in, I run all by myself. If there's going to be any questions on a public platform to answer, I'm going to do it by myself, or not at all. I'll manage myself all right. I get you. You're like a bit of limelight, eh? Well? Well, let's have a look at your hands, old boy, will you? Sure. 
Handcuffs! 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 That's better. You'd better come along quietly. Look at him. What's he doing? He's looking at himself in the mirror. This is the real thing, my boy. Acting. That's what she said, wasn't it? She was right, you know. I've been playing up to you, haven't I? I showed you a trick or two, didn't I? But this is the real thing. Come along now. Just come in. Do you have a cigarette? Sure. Thanks. You know, it's a funny thing. I want something now I've never wanted before in my whole life. A long walk. All by myself. Contrary, isn't it? You coming? But they'll get their money's worth at the trial. I'll hang in the end. They'll get their money's worth at the trial. You wait. You just wait and see. This is Robert Montgomery again, with very grateful thanks to you, Dame May Whitty, Heather Angel, Richard Ney, and Matthew Bolton, for your superb performances in Night Must Fall. We all count your appearances here a distinct compliment. It was, of course, a great personal thrill to join you for tonight's play. Good night and thank you. Mr. Montgomery may soon be seen in the Universal International production, The Saxon Charm. Dame May Whitty's current picture is Columbia's Sign of the Ram. Heather Angel may soon be seen in Universal International's The Saxon Charm. Richard Ney's next picture is Joan of Lorraine. Night Must Fall by Emmeline Williams was adapted from the stage play by Robert L. Richards, was directed by Anton M. Leader, and produced by Robert Montgomery. Lud Gluskin is our musical director and conductor, and Lucian Morrowack composes the original scores. Next week, hear Dorothy Sayers' Suspicion on radio's outstanding theater of thrills. Suspense! Be sure to hear the new Shorty Bell Show, starring Mickey Rooney, tomorrow, Sunday night at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.